and then they can start over. Yes, um, if you could start by introducing yourself, that would be nice. Okay, uh, so uh, my name is Danamo Marcos. Uh, I'm currently working at Adludio as a machine learning engineer. Uh, and today I'm going to give you a tutorial regarding uh, feature extraction um, and computer vision. So I've prepared a slide and uh, some notebooks, so over to it. So uh, I think I'm presenting, you can see my screen, right? Yes, we okay. can see it. Yeah. So uh, uh, let's start off with a question. So uh, what are features? So uh, just raise your hand or just start, start uh, speaking. So what are features? Uh, let's make this uh, tutorial interactive. So I don't want to be the only one speaking. Yeah, go on, Mohammed. So, uh, in my mind, uh, features are the the kind of things that distinguish uh, some objects between uh, that distinguish distinguish uh, some objects between each other. So, um, like uh, color is a feature, high is a feature, and so on. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, go on. Uh, Yang Bruce, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. Um, it's okay, it's Jen Rose. Hi. Jen Rose, okay. Yeah. Um, so I think features are characteristics that describe an object. Okay, okay. So, yeah. internet? Yes, I define uh, features as a uh, distinctive a distinctive uh, entities that we can uh, separately like categorize. Yeah, yeah, nice. So uh, I also have uh, components in a creative uh, from our great in the chat. So uh, you are all right. So uh, 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 features uh, in computer vision and uh, image processing are uh, it's a piece of information about the content of an image, uh, typically whether uh, a certain region and the image uh, has certain properties. So uh, as you all said, so uh, I was expecting some somewhat general uh, uh, definition of features, but uh, when we come to features in uh, image, uh, uh, as you mentioned, so a color could be one feature, an object can be another feature. So uh, basically in general or in broader terms, feature is any piece of information which is relevant for solving a computational task that's related to a certain application. Uh, and uh, these features, uh, they are uh, highly dependent on the specific problem at hand. So uh, in our case, since we are dealing with uh, features regarding images, uh, you know, um, we can mention colors, objects, but if we are uh, in another problem domain, so those features could be different. So uh, features may be specific structures in the image, such as points, aids, objects, um, text. So any of them could be features. So uh, to the next point, uh, so what's feature extraction? So if we define features um, like we did, so what is feature extraction? Uh, go on, internet. Uh, you are muted if you are speaking. And Annette, you can go on. Uh, yeah, are, are you giving me, uh, giving me the chance? I was like having a problem with my internet connection. I raised my hand, but... Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Uh, so, any, anyone else? Yeah, you are kind of speaking, so uh, um, let's give the chance to answer first.
to this day, you have raised there. Okay, yeah, continue. Okay, I think uh, feature extraction is uh, a way of uh, dimensional reduction process uh, in which uh, the initial text of raw data is uh, partitioned into more manageable uh, groups or sets. Okay, so your voice was kind of low, but uh, yeah, I, I heard something regarding dimensional key reduction, so you're probably right. So, uh, 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 feature extraction uh, is a process of transforming the raw data into meaningful features uh, that can be processed uh, while preserving the information in the original data sets, or uh, as Tugsti said, it's, uh, it's also a dimensional key reduction process uh, uh, which is used to reduce uh, the size of uh, uh, an image or any uh, other feature to make it more manageable. So uh, in computer vision, uh, feature extraction has uh, some, a big part to play. So we use feature extraction in object detection and character recognition, that means optical character recognitions and 3D image reconstructions. So 3D image extraction is basically, so we will have multiple images and we will just couple them, couple the image and try to form a 3D uh, representation of the space. So we have uh, image extraction in uh, robot navigation and as well as uh, self-driving cars. So uh, these are uh, some of the technologies that use feature extraction, computer vision, uh, uh, to mention a few, so uh, it, it, it is a, a, a very, very uh, uh, broad concept and it's uh, widely used in these industries. Um, so uh, before uh, feature extraction, so uh, when, we, when, we are, when we try to uh, extract features, we don't just basically jump into the feature extraction. There are some pre-processing that we need to handle. Uh, so uh, in the morning tutorial uh, with Milky, so there were some questions regarding image segmentation, uh, what is it and what is what it is used for. So basically what pre-processing is, is, is just an image segmentation. So there are different uh, pre-processing techniques like uh, binarization, uh, thresholding, resizing, normalization, normalization. So binarization and thresholding are more or less uh, similar uh, uh, image segmentation techniques. Uh, basically, what we what we do in these techniques is we try to uh, reduce the size of uh, the color representation in the image and just try to represent the image using just black and white. So uh, resizing is obviously just uh, reducing the or uh, enlarging the size of the image. And normalization could be just uh, if we have multiple images uh, and we need to normalize them, so we could we could perform pixel pixel uh, mm, pixel normalization or just size normalization. Just it's just bringing them to have a common size or uh, to have a common pixel ratio. So uh, these uh, pre-processing techniques uh, are applied uh, to our image uh, before applying the feature extraction, so that our feature extraction algorithms and techniques can better uh, extract the features that we are looking for. So uh, on feature extraction, there are basically uh, two types in general. There are two types of uh, feature extractions. The first one is uh, the classical or traditional computer vision based feature extraction. And the second one is uh, artificial intelligence or deep learning based uh, feature extraction. So in the first one, the traditional or the classical computer vision technique, uh, we, have, we basically have several uh, algorithms, techniques that, uh, that are used to extract the features based on our need. So here I mentioned um, two feature extraction algorithms from the classical uh, method, which, which are the, the Harris corner detection and the um, feature from accelerated segmentation. These are uh, related feature extraction algorithms uh, what are used to detect uh, edges or corners uh, in image. So uh, uh, similar to these techniques or algorithms, we have several uh, algorithms uh, regarding their uh, their features, so uh, these are basically for corners, but we have for uh, different for colors and for many other features. 
So the second one uh, in the deep learning or in the artificial intelligence based uh, feature extraction. And the basic difference is uh, in the classical and traditional method, we have an algorithm or a technique or a method that's used to extract the features. But here uh, we have uh, deep learning models, uh, artificial intelligence uh, to detect the features that we are looking for. So I'm sure you are familiar with uh, uh, convolutional neural networks, uh, which have uh, a very uh, significant uh, um, contribution in the visual imagery uh, related to uh, uh, visual detection or feature extraction. Mm. So um, anyone familiar with uh, CNN? Uh, anyone who worked on CNN or who knows what CNN is? Okay, go on. Yes, I I use I use them when I was uh, doing uh, classification uh, convolutional neural network uh, based mod modeling in in uh, fashioning. So. Uh, I can say that I have some knowledge about them. They are used, they are intensive, they end. Uh, I can say they are good when you have enough data. Yes. Uh, okay, thank you. So, uh, uh, what's the, uh, what conventional networks are? So, uh, deep learning uh, uh, networks that have uh, many deep layers. So, within those deep layers, uh, they have filters, and these filters are capable of uh, extracting features from images uh, with a greater accuracy. So, um, so in the AI or in the deep learning based feature extractions, I've tried to mention some. Um, uh, models uh, th that are uh, used. So uh, we have the super point, which is used to uh, detect uh, interest points, and D2Net also does kind of a similar job. Uh, so in this uh, deep learning, uh, so there are two types of uh, two ways that we can approach the deep learning. So one of them is we can uh, we can have our data. That means we can collect our data. Uh, we can pre-process it. We can build our models. I train them, train those models, and just to make prediction. Uh, or uh, we can use pre-trained models. So, what pre-trained models are is uh, basically passed uh, through the process I mentioned earlier. So, they will have uh, they, they are trained based on big data sets. Uh, they have uh, finished that so the data is pre-processed. So, the models are fine-tuned. And uh, finally, the model will be exported, and we will be able to uh, use those pre-trained models to make prediction on our our data sets. Uh, so yeah, that, that's basically uh, it. So uh, when it comes to image processing uh, libraries in Python, so the most common and uh, widely used image processing uh, library in Python is OpenCV. Uh, we also have Scikit-Image. Uh, is that a question? Yes, uh, I have a question. If when I was question, reading, can go on. yes, when I was reading last night, I saw that we have uh, uh, RCNN. Is that the combination of recurrent neural network and the convolution neural network, or what is it that? Hello. Uh, I can hear you, but you are kind of breaking. So, uh, just can you repeat your question? I was asking when I was reading this night. I saw that we have uh, Alas CNN. Is that the current uh, convolutional neural networks, or what is that? Can we combine uh, recurrent neural network and convolutional neural network? Is it possible? Yes, yes, uh, we can definitely combine uh, uh, RNNs and CNNs. Uh, so uh, I don't know if you guys 
um, did uh, a speech recognition. I don't know when. So uh, I'm a batch five alumni. So I think in week four or week five we had uh, uh, the challenge was speech recognition. So in that uh, the best model that performed was the uh, the CNN together with the RNN. That means so since we were dealing with uh, uh, an audio data, so the audio was converted to uh, image. So the CNN was able to detect uh, the patterns in the image, and we were able to pull it and just pass it to the RNN. And we were able to just uh, come up with a very uh, uh, accurate uh, text to speech. Uh, recognition model. So yeah, it's possible to combine um, different uh, uh, neural networks to, to get a better uh, accuracy or performance. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we have OpenCV, we have Psychic Image, uh, we have Pillow, and we have Man Manhutas. So, um, uh, so the most famous and the widely used one is OpenCV and uh, uh, in this tutorial I'll try to show you some basic uh, uh, techniques and methods uh, of using OpenCV for image pro for image processing. Um, so uh, before going on to the notebooks, so um, uh, here is a, a one of uh, so uh, as, as we mentioned, so we have two feature extractions. So the classical computer vision based and the, the deep learning based. So uh, um, later on, I'll show you the notebook that's used to generate this. But uh, here you can see that uh, we are detecting the color rate. So this, te this technique is uh, by using the traditional uh, um, feature extraction. So I don't know if it's uh, that much visible, but uh, we have three images here. So the first one is the original image, uh, and the second one is in the second one we are trying to detect uh, the color rate. So everywhere uh, where it detects red color, uh, uh, it's uh, as you can see it's white. So finally, and we can show uh, the detection uh, on the right side. So uh, mm, and next uh, mm, we have text detection using Tesseract. Uh, and I think in the morning session, uh, Milky was showing you uh, uh, some some things regarding Tesseract. So Tesseract is Google's open source uh, optical character recognition engine, and uh, you can just uh, use uh, I think yeah, it's a PY Tesseract. Uh, we have a Python package, so you can just use that package to make uh, detections, uh, text detection on your uh, data set. So as you can see uh, in the output, uh, try to detect the text. So um, it's not perfect, but uh, as you can see, it's uh, it's detecting uh, the texts that are present on the image data. So uh, in the next one, we have uh, text detection using EAST. So EAST uh, stands for efficient and accurate syntax detector. It's uh, a deep learning model uh, which is used to detect uh, text from natural images. So it's uh, fast, accurate, uh, and uh, it, it's able to detect uh, text from images uh, even with uh, lower qualities. So as you can see, it's, uh, it's pretty accurate in detecting the text that are present uh, on our image. So on the... Uh, so, uh, I forgot uh, one more thing. So, uh, so for the color detection, it's uh, just using the classical uh, computer vision technique. But here for Tesseract, it's a pre-trained model, so it's, it falls under the category of the deep learning uh, uh, feature extraction using deep learning. And again, East is also a pre-trained model, so it's it's also a deep learning feature extraction technique. And uh, finally, we have uh, object detection using. Uh, uh, TensorFlow uh, hub module. So, um, okay, uh, and not. Yeah, can you uh, say again what Tesseract does? Like, uh, I have a bad internet connection, so I wasn't able to listen. Tesseract. Uh, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. So. So yeah, Tesseract is Google's open source of character recognition engine. Uh, it's a pre-trained uh, uh, text detection 
engine. So uh, we have a PY test rack, a Python package that you can uh, download from uh, PY API and just uh, uh, just pass through your data sets and it will be able to detect the texts um, that uh, the image, uh, the texts in the image. Uh, so as you can see, uh, we have the output here. Uh, it's not that much accurate. It's, it's kind of accurate, it's not perfect, but uh, as you can see, it has detected the text uh, uh, here. So, Amani. Okay, uh, so logos can be uh, assumed as other, another features, right? As texts are? Yes, but in this case, uh, if you can see closely, uh, you can see that uh, it has detected the uh, O, uh, the logo, the the Lexus logo, as an O. Uh, yeah, that is my question. Yeah, so o -O, what it's basically trying to do. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, it it detected that it as O V, uh, but it was just a logo. So um, since it's just trying to detect because so it will try to. Um, mm, try to guess or just try to get uh, character sets uh, that it has uh, it has it has been trained with so it's a pre-trained model so it, uh, it has a data set that it has been trained on so when it looks at the the logo uh, it looks like an o so uh, the model assumes it's an o and uh, it, it, inside you can see uh, it looks like a v so that's why uh, it has detected it uh, this way so to avoid these kind of uh, things uh, we can just uh, uh, plot uh, a square around the just the texts that we want to detect uh, and if, 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 it, if we isolate the logo from um, from that section uh, we can just successfully get the, the Lexus text okay thank you just to add up on a okay. question real quick to you. Yeah, continue. So, sorry, just to add up on Amanio's question because I think it's related. So, is there a good image processing library that has been uh, image library pre trained model that is good on detecting logos? I'm not quite familiar with, uh, with that kind of pre trained model, but uh, 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 there is uh, one website uh, that uh, I, I would share with you guys. So it's uh, uh, it's called Hugging Face. So they have uh, lots of pre-trained models, they have yeah, lots of yeah, data sets. Uh, yeah, yeah. maybe uh, if there is uh... Yeah, we previously worked with Hugging Faces, uh, some libraries. Yeah, so thank you, thank you very much. Continue, okay. sorry to interrupt your flow. I just thought no it was worries, relevant. No that's why I interrupted. Yes. Don't worry. So, Andana, do you have a question? Oh, yes. Uh, from what I'm seeing from the slide is that uh, the image contains, uh, I, mean, the I mean, the text on the wall is being like covered. Some portion of it, at least, is covered with uh, a human, right? So, but it, 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 uh, the the Seract the was able to, I think, get the text uh, fully right so is it capable of like finishing the text even though it's not like visible or partially covered by some kind of object because i think the the, the text on the wall says uh car dealership or yeah find the nearest car dealership or something like that i guess is uh, that what it is a very good question that you uh I, I don't think here it detected uh, any text uh, except the one that's written uh, uh, on top of the image. So I have a notebook uh, I will show you. Uh, so uh, so so everywhere you, you see the the yellow uh, the yellow squares. So it's where it thought it had uh, it, it detected text, but when it tries to just uh, to check it with the character with the character set that it has. So it will it, it will not find any. So it will just uh, put it as empty. So I will show you on the notebook uh, what I mean. So okay. for I thought, the so for yeah. this, 
I thought it was like a yeah, so text. If you can see it's like uh, the boxes uh, represent a text, but now I get it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so what it first does is it just tries to put, uh, uh, it tries to detect text and it tries to put the box uh, around it. So if you try to detect a text within that box, so if it fails to detect text within that box, so it will it will return just an empty string. So this the output here is it's uh, it's a cleaned or a filtered output. So I will show you the original output uh, that Tesla detected on the notebook. Okay, thank but you. But for the other point that you raised regarding just filling the if if it's covered with an object, filling uh, the remaining text, I don't think it's capable of. Uh, uh, such kind of functionality. Okay, thank you. Uh, Neo Mukiza, uh, is that a question? Yeah, uh, it's just a clarification. I am used to models that. Uh, detect images so is this library used for text on or is, what is that it's it's kind of new to me to see a library that take, uh, uh, just classify text uh, in the planning i don't know if you understand my question Uh, can you please elaborate your question? So you were kind of breaking and uh, I didn't get the whole point. Okay, I can type, I can type. Let me type. Uh, sure, sure. Okay, so uh, we have test track, we have east, and finally we have object detection using TensorFlow Hub module. So TensorFlow Hub, I don't know if you are familiar with uh, TensorFlow Hub, but uh, it's uh, uh, kind of similar to Hugging Face. So it has uh, several uh, pre-trained models that you can pull off uh, the TensorFlow Hub and just um, give your own data sets and uh, uh, just get the output of the final result. So, um, so let me stop sharing here and let me share uh, my notebooks. So you can see my screen. Yeah, you can yes. produce your screen. So, yeah, so now uh, what we will try to do is um, uh, we will try to look at some of uh, the functionalities that uh, OpenCV uh, can offer and that can help us in, uh, in general in computer vision and uh, in feature extraction. So, um, as we mentioned earlier, um, we have several image segmentation techniques. Uh, so uh, one of them is uh, grayscaling. So let's start from grayscaling and just we will we will move uh, to other parts. So uh, so uh, what grayscale does is uh, it just converts the so in general when we load image using uh, 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 CV2 or uh, OpenCV. Uh, it will load them uh, if they are colored images it will be they will be loaded in three channels that means the red the green and the blue channel so uh, what uh, grayscaling is is just converting that the three channels to a single channel and just uh, the, the image will be a black and white image so our original image as you can see here uh, we have the original image here uh, as you can see uh, you can see the shape here so in uh, in uh, OpenCV, we have uh, uh, a method called uh, uh, CV CVT color. So uh, in the CVT color, we can give it 
the first argument is the original image and the second argument uh, we can give it um, so the color channel which it's converting to so here we have cv2.color egr to gray so this uh, will convert the uh, um, color in rgb to uh, grayscale and uh, we can finally see the output or the converted uh, to grayscale image uh, here um, and we can so the original shape of the image is uh, uh, as you can see it has three channels uh, but for this for the grayscale, uh, we have only one channel. So, uh, mm, so uh, in computer vision or in general in OpenCV, we have two color spaces: uh, uh, the RGB and the HSV. So uh, now we will just look at the RGB color space. Uh, so when we load images, it, it will uh, images are basically n-dimensional arrays. So we can see the size and the shape of the image uh, and uh, uh, we can split the image to uh, the first channel. Uh, so the first channel uh, is the blue channel. In the second channel, we have the green channel. In final, we have the red channel. So, so the, these channels, when combined, give us the original image or the colored image. So we can just plot uh, one of uh, each of them one by one. So for the red channel, uh, we have. Um, so if we uh, if we represent the other channels with zeros, that means uh, an, an indie, an indimensional uh, NumPy array that has zeros. Uh, so for if we, for the blue and for the green, if we give it the zeros and if, if we just keep the red, so we will have this kind of image. And similarly doing that to the green and to the blue, we will have uh, uh, this kind of Image. So when we finally uh, we can merge uh, by using this merge method, the blue, the green, and uh, the red, uh, we will finally have the entire colored image. So um, we can also uh, boost uh, colors. Uh, so uh, when, while merging, uh, if we want to boost uh, the blue color, we can just um, add some. Um, integers to the blue channel and as you can see in the image uh, the blue color is uh, boosted um, I think yeah uh, so uh, let's uh, move on to drawing on images so drawing on image uh, okay and uh, let's continue can we uh, surpass the more than like 225 uh, uh, like when we boost them so uh, is it, it really depends. Like so, uh, so it depends on the method that you are using. So uh, I have another notebook, so I will show you. So, uh, so on one of the methods, uh, when you uh, add, uh, it will go to up to two hundred fifty-five and reset back to zero and just uh, 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 move on. So if you have like two hundred fifty and if you try to add hundred, so it will. Uh, it will just finish the 255 and rotate it back to 95. So that's one of the methods. But there are also uh, other methods uh, that just uh, when they reach 255, uh, they just stop. So if you, if, if you have 250 and if you add 90, it will just uh, be at uh, 255. So there are two ways uh, of uh, handling those. So it will either reset or it will just uh, be at 255. So did I answer your question? Yeah, it does. Uh, actually, I was like uh, breaking off uh, in between. So like, if you can uh, summarize a little bit, it would be awesome, but I get a gist of it. Okay, so there are two methods. So uh, in one of the methods, uh, it will reset to zero and just uh, uh, back up. That means, uh, if the original color was at 250 and if you add 100 it will just finish off the up to 255 and just uh, go on with the remaining 95 up to that means up to 95 and in the, on one of the methods uh, on the other method it will just just be at 255 so it will not uh, reach it so there are two methods uh. okay they're clear thank you very much 
So yeah, there's another notebook. I think uh, I think it's when we talk about brightness. So uh, I, 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 I'll highlight it. So, okay. So drawing on image. So uh, drawing on image uh, in computer vision is a, a very important uh, section, or it's a critical part, uh, as we saw earlier. Uh, so uh, the models, the pre-trained models, were trying to draw not even not only the pre-trained models, but also you know, on the classical computer vision technique. Uh, it was trying to draw on top of the image. So uh, drawing on top of image is uh, uh, critical or significant to just to represent the feature, to show the feature, select the feature, to select the feature. So you can do many things uh, uh, with it. So um, so we will have a black canvas here. And so the first method uh, in drawing on image is uh, drawing a line. So we have a method called line uh, in computer in OpenCV. So uh, what uh, you do is you just uh, give it the image that's going to uh, draw on. So this image is basically the black image that we have here. So the first argument is the image. And the second argument, we give the starting point of the line. The second argument will be the end of the line. And we have the color here. And finally, we have the thickness. So. Uh, so we can finally plot this uh, line on our uh, canvas and visualize it uh, as you can see here. Its starting point is 00, zero and it's up to 511, 511 and uh, the color is kind of blue and it, it has a thickness of 5. So uh, the second uh, drawing technique uh, we have is it's a rectangle. So it's basically similar to drawing a line, but uh, the parameters or the arguments will be different here. So we will have the image. I think here we will have the first, uh, the first point, uh, uh, under hundred. Uh, then we will have the second point, uh, then the third point. Uh, we will not have the fourth point, but because since it's a rectangle, it will be closed. So it will uh, uh, automatically calculate the the last point and just close this, close off the rectangle and finally we will have the thickness and, and you can visualize it here here so we have also a circle um, and so here we have uh, the, uh, the center of the circle here we will have the radius and here we will have the circle and the color and finally uh, this is uh, if we choose to make the circle solid or just the border, uh, so we can pass a uh, minus one or a zero, and it will just uh, if it's minus one, it will be closed, and if it's a zero, it just it it will be just the stroke or just the the, the circumference of the circle. So, and we have we also have a, a, a method called polyline. Uh, it is uh, used to draw uh, whatever shape. We have uh, we want so um, we'll pass the image and we'll we'll pass the points that we want to uh, that we want as vertices for our uh, polygon and um, this uh, polygon will uh, uh, what it basically does is if it's closed or if it's open so it will decide based on this uh, parameter so you will have this uh, the color and finally the thickness and so. These methods are more or less similar, but they have uh, different parameters depending on the type of the shape that we are trying to draw. And finally, we have a put text method, which is used to put text uh, on image. So we will have the starting image. Uh, we will have the string that we are trying to write. This is the initial point of the text. We will give it a font. Uh, you know, uh, we'll give it the font, we will give it uh, one of them is the thickness, I don't know which one. Uh, one of them is the uh, one of them is the font size, the thickness, and we are also have uh, the color. So another uh, thing we can do in computer vision. Uh, yes, I have a question oh. in regards to drawing on images. So in real life, what are the uses of uh, this specific type of tasks or this type of tool. Okay, yeah, so uh, I don't know if you missed it, but uh, on the slide that I was showing earlier, uh, so uh, you can see the yellow polygons, right? 
Yes. So, so uh, when I you're understand. trying to detect the features, yeah. So that's what we basically will do uh, uh, when we when we want to draw an image. So in the first one, we are, I don't know if you can see that we have blue dots. So it's uh, we made this by using just drawing on images. Similarly here, uh, here, uh, and finally here as well. So this is the the purpose of drawing on images. Okay. So as I just I thought it was uh, done by the by the library itself. Yeah, it's, uh, it's done by the library itself, but internally it's uh, what it's doing. Okay, I understood that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, no worries. So, uh, translations and rotations. So, so, um, so in computer vision, we can load uh, different images and just apply different translations, rotations uh, on them. So, uh, we will have, uh, there are methods, uh, uh, built in methods. Uh, uh, on, in OpenCV that will allow us to perform this kind of translations, rotations, scaling. Um, so uh, here we have a method called uh, wrap affine. So uh, uh, we'll give it the image and we'll give it the, the, the transpose uh, 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 metrics and we'll pass the width, the height, and uh, uh, it will basically just translate the uh, the image. So as you can see, we have the original image here. So when we apply some sort of uh, transformation on the image based on uh, uh, a matrix, so uh, we can see that uh, the image has moved uh, from its original place. So this is translation. So uh, we also have a rotation. Uh, so on the same method, so uh, we will have a rotation matrix and just define uh, our rotation matrix here. Mm, uh, here we have a scaling factor of uh, one and uh, the angle of rotation to be 19 and we can finally visualize uh, the, the rotation uh, uh, like this and here we can also do a rotation with scaling uh, mm -hmm. I, so yeah so there are different methods uh, or different things uh, that we can use uh, so regarding translations and rotation so we can flip the image so as you can see the original image uh, we can flip it horizontally flip it vertically so since the uh, images are in dimensional arrays uh, we can just manipulate those arrays to form a different uh, array and so when we just compile back uh, to the image so the image will either be rotated flipped uh, mm, and uh, different uh, things uh, will happen to the image based on our uh, manipulation of uh, the image matrix. So another one is uh, uh, scaling, resizing, uh, and cropping. So uh, we have a method called uh, resize and we just give it a resizing factor and it will just uh, resize our image. Uh, so here is the original image and it's uh, on a 0 0.75 scale, uh, you can see the image is resized here. You can just make it uh, twice as big. As you can see, the numbers has, has doubled on the X and Y axis. So there are different things we can uh, uh, do here. So let me just show you cropping and we can just move on from this part. So yeah, so in cropping, so since images are, uh, as we said, they are in dimensional arrays, we can just give it a starting row and in row, a starting column in, in column and just, uh, just this will just give us a section of the uh, in dimensional array and just when we represent it back to the image, we will have a cropped image. So this is the original image. So these are the points uh, that we gave as the starting row, starting column, and in column and in row. So finally, uh, the cropped section uh, will be uh, somewhat like this. So I think uh, regarding computer vision, I only have uh, one more notebook. So let's just uh, go over it, and uh, I will also have. Uh, uh, I will go back to the deep learning uh, notebooks. So uh,
have the grayscale image uh, so uh, and we will have uh, uh, so when we want to increase the brightness or decrease the brightness of the image uh, we will have uh, another dimensional array and just subtract um, some values uh, from the original image uh, by using this uh, one so here we have uh, uh, this uh, n dimensional array and this is the original image so when we uh, so here as you can see when we are increasing uh, the brightness so here we have two ways of doing it so uh, two ways of increasing the brightness the first one is we use the uh, the cv2 add method and we just give the, the original image and the matrix that we want to increase the brightness with Mm -hmm. and, and on the second one, we have just the image, uh, just using uh, the plus sign to add uh, um, brightness to the image. So on the first output, uh, as you can see, uh, the brightness uh, has increased uh, and all the values uh, that, that might exceed 255 are kept at 255. Uh, so to visualize the difference, if you can see here, uh, mm, the difference is, I think, visible. Uh, this in here the values has reset uh, to zero and just uh, kept uh, increasing so that's why these areas uh, have a difference so here it has set to 255 but here it has moved back to zero and just moved up uh, up to the amount and uh, similarly uh, we have uh, that, that kind of behavior on the subtract method here we can see uh, so uh, when we subtract here by using the subtract method and here by using uh, just the minus sign, uh, we can see the difference. So here when we decrease, uh, when we reach to zero, it will just revert back to 255. That means, uh, it, as you can see, the colors has received back. Mm. So uh, let me just uh, go over this part. So it's simple. So here, uh, I, I, I think I, I, you guys are familiar with bitwise operations. So uh, this example is just to, to visualize uh, bitwise operations uh, in computer vision. So here we will have, we just have a square and we have a half ellipse and we just try to um, just visualize the bitwise operations. So we have bitwise int, bitwise or, bitwise xor and uh, bitwise not. So when we, uh, when we end the two images, so if we will have this kind of image, so bitwise or, we have bitwise XOR uh, and bitwise not. So, uh, so this is regarding the computer vision part. Um, these are the notebooks. So, if you have questions before I move on to the uh, deep learning section, uh, I didn't get the bitwise part. Uh, I understood what you have said, but um, I'm not familiar with the bitwise. Okay, so uh, are you familiar with uh, uh, logic gates? Yes. So yeah, what we are basically trying to do is uh, it's just uh, kind of like uh, um, so here we have a square, this one, and here we have uh, an ellipse, uh, this one. So the first method bitwise end. So what we are trying to do is we are trying to. Uh, uh, perform end operation between the square and the ellipse and as you can see uh, this and this we will have the common areas so the area we have here is the in their intersection so this square and this ellipse we have their intersection here that's the bitwise end for the second we have this for the second one for the second one we have bitwise or again between the square and the ellipse and the output here is just we will have both of them so as you can see the bitwise or operation will be the square together with the ellipse and uh, bitwise uh, xor again between the square and the ellipse uh, we will have the area uh, that's not commonly shared by both that means if you can see the white area this part is exclusive to the square and the remaining white area is exclusive to the uh, to the ellipse so the intersection will be uh, left and finally uh, for the bitwise end so end operations are just um, will be only on one of them so uh, it will just invert it and just 
uh, we will have uh, just the reverse of uh, the square. Okay, so I get that. Uh, is that clear? Um, yes, I, I get that. But um, in, in regards to deep learning, uh, what is the use of speechwise? Um, uh, we might not see the exact or the real applications here, but um, when we when you are performing uh, different uh, picture extractions or image processing, you might need to uh, to to have this kind of operations. That means, so if let's say if you have two objects in the intersection uh, intersectioning, you might need the end or the or uh, bitwise operation. Uh, to isolate the area that's commonly shared by or which is um, or their exclusive areas so you might want to just select those two objects and you might want to select the areas shared by them or uh, their exclusive areas so um, the, the application is I mean, you might not see it here but uh, uh, when you are processing uh, for uh, deep learning uh, and machine learning models uh, they, these methods will be uh, pretty useful I got that. Thank you. Uh, did you get my point, Mama? Okay. Uh, yes. can go. Yeah. Can we change those bitwise operators? I mean, operations. Like, uh, if we like uh, do uh, when we uh, like first maybe do the and and uh, later like try the or x or like can we uh, use like a combination of them like. Like what we do in uh, yeah, definitely. traditional, like definitely. So if the okay. yeah, if if the problem that you are trying to tackle, uh, uh, we need you to uh, just first apply the end, then the exor. Yeah, you can definitely uh, uh, do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So since there are uh, in-dimensional arrays and these bitwise operations are just uh, just um, automatically uh, manipulating the the values inside the n-dimensional arrays so as, as possible you can do uh, whatever you like with them. Okay, thank you. So, uh, shall I move to the deep learning uh, section? Uh, if, uh, if you have no questions. Okay, continue. Can you read the... Yumukuza, you can read the... Yeah, can you read the chat box? Okay, type. Mm, I'm not sure about uh, the inner buildings of Tesseract, but uh, Tesseract uh, is, is, is just an image. Uh, it's, uh, it's used to detect text from image, but uh, CNN is more general, so... Um, you can have different models uh, that are based uh, on CNN, but they do different things. So uh, uh, you can build a CNN model that's used to um, do uh, optical character recognition. Uh, uh, you, 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 the application is limitless when it comes to CNN. But regarding Tesseract, uh, it's just uh, an ethics detection uh, engine. Uh, Built by Google uh, just to take text from image, so that's the the purpose, the sole purpose of uh, Tesseract is to detect image uh, text from image. But CNN is uh, you, you can use CNN to detect uh, for object detection, for text detection, for color detection. So uh, the application is uh, vast. Okay, I understood it. Thank you. Okay, no problem. So uh, let's move to the final section of this tutorial. So, uh, uh, so the first one is color detection. Uh, so uh, this one is the the one that we saw on the slide. So we just load the asset uh, uh, from our folder, and here we have two methods. The first method is the detect color. Mm. Mm, mm, which is to detect color, and the second method is uh, used to mark uh, the areas where the color is detected. So, uh, uh, as we mentioned uh, earlier, this method uh, uses the, mm, 
the traditional or the classic computer vision based approach. So there is no models involved, there is no training involved, there is no prediction involved. So we just have a, a method or a technique or an algorithm that's used to detect the color. So what it basically does is we will give it a, a bounding uh, of the color that we are trying to detect. That means so uh, here if you are trying to detect the, the color red, we will give it the upper and lower bounds of the color that we are trying to detect. Here the, the first lower bound of the color uh, we will give it as, uh, like this one. Uh, we will we'll just give it the, the bounds of the color here. So what uh, it will basically do is it will try to uh, look for this color bound within, within our image. Uh, so we have here the original image. Um, and finally, uh, we can see the output uh, like this. So this is the original image. Uh, let me... Okay, the zoom, the zoom is not working on the image. Uh, I don't know if you can see it clearly, but... Uh, I couldn't zoom on the image, but uh, on the original image, uh, <coughs> sorry. So on the, we have the original image here. So I tried to take the, the color rate and uh, we tried to um, trash the, the regions that we detected, the color, the color that we bounded to, and finally we try to just uh, draw on the image uh, where we detected the color. So this uses the traditional uh, uh, image, uh, uh, computer vision based uh, image detection. So for the tesseract, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have a PY tesseract uh, Python package that you can download and uh, uh, used uh, Tesseract with. So uh, we have the original image here. Uh, so uh, so here uh, we have uh, the pre-processing techniques uh, that we talked about earlier, the uh, image segmentation. So here, uh, this method will convert the image to gray uh, and uh, this method will blur the image. So as you can see here, we have a method called Gaussian blur, which is to blur the image and we have trash uh, uh, what trash basically does is it will just convert uh, uh, the image to have only white and uh, black that means uh, that our our model will easily be able to detect the uh, mm, text from it so so uh, as you can see here uh, we applied the grayscale method on the image uh, and here we blurred it then finally, uh, when we apply the trash, as you can see, we have only black and white color, and the the text uh, is kind of visible and uh, it can easily be detected by our model. So um, in the test tract, uh, we have uh, an image to string method, and we'll just give it the we'll give it we'll give it the image, and we have a configuration. Uh, so uh, the parameters here we pass it uh, uh, the language as English, and we have also other parameters. So you can do more research on this. Uh, there are several parameters that you can pass to the test uh, uh, to just improve you the accuracy of uh, detecting the texts that you are looking for. So here we'll use the image to string uh, method. So uh, this was what I was uh, talking about earlier. So. Uh, so we have a detected text list uh, where uh, the texts that the test track detected are populated. And uh, here, as you can see, we have lots of empty strings uh, before we get the text that we are looking for. So uh, on the image, if you can see, it has highlighted different sections, uh, uh, assuming uh, it, it will find text uh, but it didn't so these sections will be uh, empty strings and finally just we can just filter the empty strings and just to have a, a kind of meaningful um, text detected from the image so this is tesseract and we have ist so so as i said this is efficient and accurate scene text detector so um, it's again a pre-trained model so um, yeah, you can just uh, Download a model, load it, and just give it your 
uh, image data and you will be able to uh, visualize the the output or the texts that the, uh, the pre-trained model detected uh, from your image. So here, as you can see, um, it has highlighted and detected the texts that we have in our image. And finally, uh, on the um, object detection, as we mentioned earlier, we used TensorFlow Hub, a uh, pre-trained model from the TensorFlow Hub. So we have here methods to display the image, to draw the bounding box on the image. Mm -hmm. So it, since it's a pre-trained model, uh, it will basically have, uh, so if you visit the uh, TensorFlow Hub uh, website, you will have access to different uh, pre-trained models and how to use them and to fit your data in the model and just uh, get the output or uh, the result. So here, as you can see, uh, it has detected wheel uh, with confidence of 53%, a car with 93 again, another car with 97%. So it will just uh, draw a bounding box on the image. It detects uh, with, uh, with its confidence level. So uh, you can use uh, this uh, pre trained model to enrich your uh, data sets or your creatives. Um, Okay, and not. Uh, okay, Fasa, continue. Yeah, so I saw Tesseract being uh, like installed using uh, PIP or something, right? It's not an API call, right? You can download. Yeah, yeah, we have API like Tesseract. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's but, uh, what, about, what, what about for the other pre trained models like for East and for TensorFlow Hub? Is like the model big enough, small enough to be downloaded, or is it like an API call? Uh, it's not an API call. Uh, uh, for the East, uh, uh, you will need to uh, download uh, the module. Uh, uh, it's a pre-trained module and you will need to have it uh, uh, in your uh, directory here as you can see these two files uh, i think this one is the extracted version but this file uh, uh, it text uses um, east uses this model to it loads this model and tries to detect the text by using this model so you'll need to um, download this uh, and just give it uh, Give it, uh, uh, I think, the, okay, on the east, uh, to, there's probably a place, where, yeah. So yeah, when yeah when you read it, you you need to give it, uh, you need to give it the file. But for the for the uh, TensorFlow Hub, uh, I, you just pass the URL uh, and it will just uh, download it from the URL, but. Uh, uh, I think it will put it as a temporary file and maybe uh, when you close the uh, notebook, uh, it might delete it, but uh, you can just uh, use it as a, so you will just pass the URL to the pre-trained model and it will just load it, catch it, and just use it to predict, um, uh, use it to perform the object detection. So the, there is no API calls here, but uh, there, are, uh, there are some pre-trained models uh, that you can use by using uh, API calls. I think Google has lots of, uh, uh, Google's models are API based, so they will have their model, the models on their uh, machines running somewhere, and you'll just uh, query them okay. using API so, calls. But here, the examples okay. I used are uh, pre-trained models. Thank yeah, you, continue. and a related, related question. I saw a lot of, uh, not a lot of, but some, CV2 parameters when you actually interact with Tesseract. Is that like an individual, uh, like a simple parameter or are we still using OpenCV to interact with Tesseract? I think uh, I, can, I, I can see the documentation in GitLabs, but maybe you can simply tell us here, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, the reason why we used uh, uh, OpenCV uh, on the on the Tesseract notebook is uh, Tesseract expects the image to be pre-processed. 
That means uh, uh, if we give it the, uh, the direct image or the original image, uh, the colored image, one, it might not even accept the image because it has three channels. Uh, and two, it might not uh, uh, detect the text uh, as accurate as it would uh, with a trashed image. So the reason that we used uh, uh, OpenCV is first to load the image, then we uh, we grade we grade scale the image, then we blur the image, uh, finally we trash the image. So uh, this is basically the pre-processing techniques uh, that Tesla expects the input image to be in. Thank you very much. I think that reduces lots and lots of frustration for some of us. Thank you. Okay, no worries. Uh, Mohammed? Yes, um, I have a question in regards to detecting logos. So uh, in this week we have, I think we have uh, to detect logos from images. So uh, is there any library that we could use to detect, uh, to detect logos? Mm, I'm not uh, uh, quite familiar with the library uh, that you can use. But uh, if you have uh, enough uh, uh, data sets of logos, yeah, you can be able to build your own uh, logo detection model. Uh, so I don't know uh, the number of logos uh, yeah, that are available to you, but if you have uh, different logos, that means different brand logos uh, with different uh, sizes, uh, different styles uh, uh, labeled uh, that mean, um, uh, you can you can build your own um, supervised learning model uh, to make predictions but uh, I think it will take more time um, but I'm I'm not quite familiar with the uh, logo detection models so. okay thank you okay Isaac Okay, my question is also about the logos. You said earlier that uh, we can select the area of the logos and give it to the model so that uh, the model shouldn't have to uh, detect it. For example, uh, we can select the area and give it to the and, and somehow like that. So how, how do we handle that? Uh, I think you have the logos uh, a separate uh, file, right? Yes. So uh, if you have the logos as separate files, uh, what you can do is uh, you can try to look uh, on the original uh, file for the position of the logo. Uh, so what you, you basically do is you will have uh, the entire image uh, with the logo and you will have another just separate logo file. And what you do is you try to find the logo within the image. So after that, uh, if you successfully find the position of the, the logo inside the image, so you can just change the color uh, uh, or you can do whatever you want on that section, on that specific section. So you can just plug that part out so that your model will not be uh, will not be confused uh, uh, thinking that it's a text or uh, something else so uh, one of uh, one thing you can do is uh, this uh, the one that i mentioned here so did, okay. did i answer your question is that... yes yes you have answered my question but i also have another question uh, can you go back to the notebook uh, for color detection So uh, I think uh, there are places uh, in which there is no uh, red color, but the model has detected them to be one. Um, can you explain a little yes. bit about that? So it all depends on the uh, on the bound of the color we give it. So. So it has found those colors to be in this bound. Uh, it might not be visually red to your eyes, but uh, you can kind of see it. So when the light glares on that part, uh, 
it kind of uh, it kind of falls on the range uh, uh, of a red color. So uh, so it all depends on the range we give it. So if you if you, if we give it a wide range of uh, uh, red, uh, uh, it might detect uh, it might detect colors uh, that may not look red to our eyes. But if we if you want to just um, make the make it detect only red colors that are visible to our eyes, we can give it uh, a bound of color, a bound of red color, which is uh, visibly red to the human eye. So that's what basically happened here. So, uh, so the color it it, it's, uh, it falls in this uh, range. So it all depends on the range that you give it. So if if even if it's uh, another color. So it all depends on the range that you give it. So it will detect based on that range and it will output uh, the result. Okay, thank you. Uh, Tegzi? Okay, thank you. Uh, I hope uh, you have uh, some information on our uh, tasks the creative optimization. So uh, for our purpose, uh, we need to apply the um, deep learning based image uh, processing or computer vision rather than the uh, traditional computer vision. So uh, of course, the, the application is and the data set is uh, determines the type of deep learning uh, technique or uh, architecture. So, as emotion learning in general, uh, which which technique or deep learning architecture you support us for the feature extraction and uh, image segmentations? Mm, so, uh, as you said. Uh... The, the first thing is uh, just identifying the, the features. That means uh, these creative data sets, uh, they have uh, common things. That means uh, mm, uh, since they are creative, uh, are creatives, so they have common features. So uh, what you need to do is just identify those features. So one of those features uh, uh, could be uh, the position of the, uh, the CTA button. So, uh, so that's one of the features. So, so there are some features uh, that can that you can detect by using the traditional method, uh, and there are other other features that you can uh, use. You can detect using deep learning, and there are other features that you can detect by using um, one or the other or both. So it all depends on. Uh, one of the things you have to consider is, I think, uh, performance uh, plays a uh, uh, key role. That means uh, when you when you use pre-trained models, uh, the the time that it takes for the model to detect um, shouldn't be uh, significantly high. Uh, so uh, you 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 can, you can think of these things, uh, these parameters, so, um, as a parameter to make decisions on to, uh, on which uh, on which to use. So uh, let's say if you have uh, if you can detect color by using uh, the classical method uh, and as well as the uh, the deep learning method. So if it takes uh, uh, fifteen seconds for the deep learning model to detect the color, and if it takes three seconds for the for the classical method, then you have to go with the classical method. So you have to make these kind of decisions uh, as you go. Uh, but the first and the most critical part is uh, identifying the features uh, that you are looking for. So then you will decide uh, on which technique to use. Uh, did I answer your question? Okay, that bark. Um, okay, thank you. Uh, so in the object detection part, you have used the tensor flow hub. But if I'm not mistaken, in the morning, Milky has mentioned uh, the YOLO 7 uh, for uh, object detection. So if you're familiar uh, with 
um, your seven, can you like mention some things if they have like some similarities or if they're if these two are related? But if not, can you uh, tell me the difference between those uh, when we are using them for objectification? Uh, so, uh, regarding object detection, uh, the model that I used is just uh, uh, one of the public models uh, that were published on the TensorFlow Hub. So, even on TensorFlow Hub, uh, there are uh, several uh, object detection um, object detection models uh, that I could have pulled uh, uh, and used. So, um, I don't know if I have it here, but. Uh, uh, on the same notebook, uh, there was uh, another link that I, yeah, another link to uh, another uh, TensorFlow Hub uh, model that I used, but it, its performance was uh, uh, very low and it took uh, so much time. So, um, so uh, uh, you have to decide. Uh, you have to just look at models. So the the. The bad thing here is these models are not trained uh, on uh, on Alludeus uh, creative data sets. So uh, one of the downsides of using pre-trained models are these models are trained uh, with uh, with uh, other data sets that are uh, that are definitely not related to uh, creative arts or any any kind of uh, creative design. So it will be hard for these models to to perform well. Uh, when we give it a, a creative uh, ad. So uh, those decisions, uh, you have to look uh, uh, for their accuracy, for their performance, and just uh, load uh, some of the models that are available and just test uh, by using the, the data you have locally. Uh, regarding the YOLO 3, uh, YOLO is one of the best uh, object detection models uh, out there. Uh, uh, I've tried it uh, uh, on other occasions, but uh, I think uh, you have another tutorial on industry uh, uh, tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. Uh, maybe uh, if you have specific questions regarding Yolo 3, uh, you might want to raise them there. Um, but regarding just object detection, just it all depends on uh, on the on a model on the model's performance. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, Mikhail? Hello? Yeah, I can hear. Go on. Yeah, uh, my question was you were extracting some text out of the image, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, we have seen that the logo of uh, the, the logo of Lexus have been somehow intermingled with that of the text and uh, it have some generated some uh, uh, text that have some disturbance so how do we handle such types of things when we are extracting features for the model okay yeah i think you missed it but uh, i was explaining uh, this uh, situation uh, earlier with one of uh, the trainings uh, yeah so, uh, you have said like you have said like we draw a triangle uh, a rectangle and we apply uh, uh, extraction yeah, for yeah, the, yeah. the rectangle is yeah, that that mean you can't handle this yes it can but it is uh, just one of the uh, the simplest thing the straightforward way of uh, handling it so uh, you can be creative and uh, come up with your own methods uh, of uh, efficiently or accurately uh, detecting the text from those kind of situations okay, okay thank you uh, so uh, if uh, if you guys don't have uh, any more questions, I think uh, this is uh, it by me. <clears throat> okay, um, thank you, DA. Um, if you guys don't have any more questions, then let's end the session. Do we have any more questions? Okay, good.
Okay, um, thank you, Dave. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day.